All right, welcome to Shop Talks. Um, I don't know, make sure you check the schedule. This is not about artificial intelligence. This is what was originally the four o'clock, which is about sustainability and innovation um, and sustainability. Um, have Johan Gersetti here, who is from Caesar, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But first, I wanna thank our sponsors that make all this free for all of you, which is Los Angeles Apparel. Alpha Broder, Stalls Transfer Express, LAT Apparel, Lane 7, Howard Transfers, and Hirsch. They all make this possible. I'm from the Ink Kitchen. Check out our YouTube channel. Um, also, check out our poster printing later back there, live in person. We're printing these, and all the money goes to this really great homeless charity here in Atlantic City called Adelaide's Place. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me today. So. I've been speaking to you for many years, and it's kind of nice to be here. Yeah. So, um, well, first, uh, what is C everybody's not familiar with Caesar. What's, what's Caesar? So Caesar is the largest manufacturer of heat transfer when it comes to the films uh, that are being provided. Most people call that vinyls, uh, which is not a real good term for it because vinyl would be a PVC. Uh, we manufacture from everything that goes into any inkjet, solvent, eco-solvent, cutters, and we manufacture all the way from the craft, all the way to the professional world, to Nike, Adidas, uh, many different manufacturers that are around the world. Big company. <laughs> we so anything you do makes a big difference, actually. Uh, so, you know, you and I started talking about sustainability in the in industry, which is a, a term, you know, bandied about. Um, let's first talk about inspiration. So. Where's your inspiration to try to make some of what we do more sustainable? Well, I think it just comes from your kids, right? When you look at your kids, um, I have two girls. They are now 17 and 18. I grew them up as growing vegetables with me, learning how Mother Earth gives it back to us. And um, when I, well, they were looking at all the things we do and how much polyesters and how many films we provide into the industry, uh, they challenged me. They said, you know, what about what about us? And I know a lot of people speak about sustainability and they speak about recycling. They see uh, political visions of it when we should look at what our planet is. And you don't have to believe or not believe. I think everything at the end of the day, you should try to do the best you can. All right. So you want to talk a little, uh, actually you can talk for a while in here and maybe go at it. Um, it's not that easy, is it? There's not like a simple action like we're just going to replace x with y i wish but, it was that easy right it is not <laughs> that easy so well, talk a little bit about like the, the whole life cycle of a of a product and and where the sustainability points are it goes in multiple different area because everything that you're trying to make even like right now we're moving all of our film and everything into a, a water-based type of process it doesn't necessarily mean that water base is also clean for Mother Earth because it takes a lot of energy to create a water-based product. So you have to think on how you efficiently do from the A to Z because sustainability is also something when you put the film on your shirt, you have to meet your CPSI compliance, you have to meet all the compliance for the children's clothing, you have to meet the ISL for Nike, you have to meet all the different requirements that the industry is asking us and driving us to be better at it. But in the same time, it doesn't mean you, that need, you sacrifice the pollution on the side of it because when you make product, you have a company that runs a lot of energy. So understanding from the A to the Z point, it's very hard to grab a component and replace it just like this. One of the number one components that changed back in the days, we had a lot of PVC films. That's how the letters and the numbers were being done. Then it went to what we call a polyurethane, which is a PU. The PU is something that is really good for you because it doesn't have any arm on your body. It doesn't create any toxin into your body, but it still has on the manufacturing side what we call phosphate. And the phosphate, uh, sorry, my English accent, I can't make that up. I, I, I'm sorry if I say the word wrong, but anyway, the phosphate are something that goes inside of the vinyls that are becoming more and more illegal because on the manufacturing Phthalates. side. Yeah, 
Sorry. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm sorry. Um, but they're, they're the thing in a plastic or other material that makes it pliable, right? Correct. And they give you that softness touch to it. They give you that stretch. So keeping those components of having something soft on the shirt, stretch and rebound, is not as easy when you're starting to replace with water base. It takes a lot of research into it and finding ways to manufacture it the most efficiently so in the same time you don't make bad things when you produce it. Right. It's not just what happens to it after someone uses it. It's also how you make it. How you make it. So where do you start? I mean, it's a daunting task. Well, we, we really started on how making sure that our product could be completely recyclable in the future so that they did not have an impact in the future on where we were going. Uh, you've seen the Asprint coming out. We have a whole new range of water-based product coming out this year with the DTV came out. Um, and we're watching basically the trend. In Europe, they are more advanced when it comes to the water-based transfer. Everybody right now and the demands in any club, anything, is already on the water-based. And those are being guided not just by the regular brand, but they're also being guided by the norms that are being installed into the manufacturing of it. So a lot of things are not available and chemicals are getting less and less available in the world to be able to do the things that we currently do. So where is it headed? How, how far can we go? You know, I guess is the, right now is it, do you need more demand on the customer end? Do you need, uh, you know, more research to figure things out? How, what's, how are we going to become more sustainable? Obviously it's important. Sustainability is a set of mind, right? It's something that you need to tell yourself on how you can make a difference a little by little and how it doesn't also impact your life in a negative way because if it's to take a job away or if it's to take something away, I don't think it's the goal. The goal is to keep everybody and it's still going towards a green, a green prospect of it. So the demand is not the problem. The demand is there. I think it's more the research time that it requires to get there. The demand is there. I think the education aspect of it, most people don't care if a product does one thing and it goes on their shirt and it holds. That's what the customer at the end really wants. Uh, they don't really know what, what's behind the film, how it recycles and things like this. But all of us as manufacturers and all of you printing the shirts, I think you should take an impact on how and, and regarding on how you're going to be making shirts in your future because it impacts the planet. So. And then how much is regulation going to come into it? I know that you know, it doesn't even have to be regulated everywhere. You know, if you have, um, I mean, in the past, I know something will change in California, and that's enough for the manufacturers to have to change so they don't have a different product in California. Or maybe Germany, uh, or, or, or some of the brands. You know, Adidas requires something. Suddenly, everybody else is going to fall in line. Where, where, are, we, where are we going with uh, I guess brand demands, where are we going with uh, regulation? What, what's happening on that front? Everything starts somewhere. It usually starts with the brand and then the regulations come in place because they make the awareness on it. Uh, I always, totally unrelated, but look at the Formula One racing back in the days. Uh, they're the one that actually created the automatic shift, right? Before it was all a shift, but because on there it was on the gear and this is how we do it. So things I think technology comes into our place by being driven by the bigger players that our requirements are changing. Uh, they have a bigger goals, they want to basically be known as, and I think you have to adapt to their processes which then create regulations. Europe is way, way, way more strong already on the regulation, just on the manufacturing side of it. There's a lot of chemicals you cannot currently use uh, in the process of it. There's a lot of chemicals that I can't go back in the dirt. And when you mean in the manufacture of your products versus the application of your products? Correct. Right. right there, I'm just at the manufacturing side of it. Uh, the requirements are going to be different. Uh, you're seeing a lot more um, with all the requirements that are on there. How do you recycle the chemicals when you're done with it? I mean, that's a lot of cost nowadays because they tax the area of where they can't get rid of the, the products, it costs you even more. So they're making basically the ability to be more green and more recyclable actually price advantages because now you're actually cheaper to make a pr product that is clean because you don't have to worry about what you do with your chemicals, you don't have to worry about how you, re how you recycle them back in the process. Recycling is a very funny thing that people laugh because a lot of times your garbage pick up your recycling and it ends up being in the same area in the same dump. That's what I always hear when I talk about recycling. Um, right, maybe, but I, what I would tell people is that we have to start somewhere. So don't give up on recycling, I tell people. I mean, just try, make people, make, make, 
people that recycling your products, make them accountable to actually recycle them and not doing it. One of the biggest issue we have in America to label a product recyclable is each, not even state, but each county has their own recycling law. Right, in Europe when we have France as their own, Italy as their own, once you pass a, a recycling plan, you can recycle a product and put it on there, it's recyclable. In the United States, it's divided in county almost. I mean, I don't county, I don't know, but it's in the state basically divided in each of it. So I mean, even Michigan doesn't have the same recycling law everywhere in the area, which that's a problem, honestly, because to be able to make it and be, put a stamp of recycle, it's very hard to go to every county to say, Yes or no? Right. So, um, if you're, I mean, a lot of people are trying to do the right thing, right? What kind of things should they be looking for in their suppliers and in the products that they purchase? Like, what, what kind of things do make a difference, do you think? You know, and what kind of, I know a lot, there's a lot of greenwashing, a lot of, uh, you know, nice pretty graphics with water in it. It doesn't necessarily mean the product behind it is, is truly uh, uh, an improvement. So what kind of things should people be looking for, do you think? I think the number one thing is looking at the norms, the CPSA compliance already for our children. Um, it is a, basically something you have to pass to be able to make sure that your children, if they put it in their mouth or it's in contact with their skin, are not going to have any long longevity of issues. They don't seem like a problem because usually you don't see the problems, but 20, 30 years later, it could impact the child that has been weighing something that is wrong, right? The problem is you don't have a direct impact when something is bad for you. It's a long-term impact, so you never really can narrow it to where it goes. But CPSI compliance is the number one thing that I would tell people that are printing to make sure you meet those requirements because if it's good for our children, it's also good for the adult, right? <laughs> So that's the CPSIA uh, regulations. Regulations. And they're about like children's sleepwear, children's garments in general. Correct. No lead in the zippers. Uh, uh, no, no phthalates in, no the, in the ink, et cetera. For a while, they were going to make people brand everything to, to follow that. They're not really seeming to enforce that so much, right? Sadly, no. Sadly, no, yes. Um, and then what other kind of things with a supplier should we be looking for? And, you know, what kind of questions should we be asking of our suppliers? What are your manufacturing process? How do you do? How do you handle your, your, your leftovers? What do you do with them? How, how are you thinking that the future is going to go into the development of your ink? How is the development of your films going to be degrading back in the Mother Earth? You know, I mean, when you're dealing with a water-based product, the good thing about this is, it will degrade back into a water pr prospect. And I mean, right now, what we are on the new films that we are launching, we are at a 99.8, so it's not even 100%. We're also working on the films, basically, that after five years being in the dirt, it becomes dirt again. So it, it, it won't even have an impact on within the five years. We're trying to scale down, basically, the longevity of the film. That sounds like something very easy to do when you talk like this, but you also have to hold in washing for a bit bunch of cycles that people are going to be wearing it over and over and over. And the two things don't always agree with each other. Being recyclable makes it very easy to come off the shirt. So being able to hold and have a steady things takes a lot of uh, research in the development into using new chemicals that are good, good or even better for the for the for the mother earth. So. Uh where are we at now? Like, where, what are the most advanced kind of films that are available in terms of uh, sustainable films? So we've launched a digital media that is called the Asprint, that is a pure water base, 100% um, recyclable on the polyester and the film. It is not purely degradable at this time yet. So, so the, pl so the um, you mean the carrier sheets? Like the carrier sheet is fully recyclable, so everything you're throwing away can go right now in a recycler bin. Uh, the film is a water base, so it will actually degrade itself into a water in the future, but it is not completely dissolvable yet in the, in, in the dirt. We're launching a new film in the middle of the year that is going to be a whole cuttable. For those that know Caesar, Easy Weed is the number one product. It is a PU. It does have phosphate in it. So we are trying to revamp it with an eco stretch, which will be a full water base range of products that are going to be in the market. Again, the whole full cuttable will also be fully recyclable and will right now de degrade back to about a 98%. The gold is a 99.8%, but it will basically degrade to nothing at 98% within five years. 
And are some of these products, so Europe's ahead, like are some of the products already in Europe and we're going to get them here, that kind of thing? That is or correct. are they just going to soon be everywhere? They're already available in Europe and they will be available in the U.S. Honestly, the biggest problem we have when we launch something here in the U.S. for us compared to Europe is our market is a whole lot bigger. We have a whole lot more people printing here. So to scale it up when you have something and new processes and new, new, new ideas, you sometimes have to start slowly to make sure the quality stays to the standard. So. And Caesar's actually global, uh, right? You're yes. all over the entire world, right? Yeah, we have an office in Singapore, Australia. We have a, in, in Italy. We are also based in Michigan and in Miami for the South American market. So are you like a voice in the wilderness at your company or, uh, you know, or is uh, like the... <clears throat> You know, the administration and the other workers with you are, is, is the tide turning at all? Are people realizing that they should go in this direction or are you, you fighting tough, the fight all the time? That's a tough question, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm going to put you on film here. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's horrible to say that one on the front. But I think you have both. I mean, people have... Maybe talk in broad terms, do you think? In broad, people, the have, industry. people have their idea and they have their, 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 their feelings, right? So a lot of people say that we are chasing a dream that is unachievable. Um, a lot of people will be in there because you have to work out or to come up with ideas on how to make it, things green. So if I tell you that everybody believed in it, I wish. Um, it's a battle. It's a battle to try to sacrifice profit for the right thing. Yeah. Is it getting any better, you think, or not? It is, but I think the, um, what we're missing is the education side of it. What I think people are missing is the education of what it really does in the long term. It's a really hard thing, actually, to explain the entire life cycle of a product and all the things. Everybody just want to, is this the good green thing or not? Like, a, a lot of people, I think Americans are used to immediate gratification in particular, and they don't want to think, what I would say, theologically, of, like, the, the implications of what they do, if everybody did what they do, or the, the, to realize the entire process. I think that's hard, right? It, it is really hard because, Richard, the, the one thing is, we, we get moved by, by stories. So like when we talk about the turtles, we're like, oh my God, we need to stop and we cut our little things, but we don't think that this little piece of bad plastic that's going on Mother Earth. So we get moved by story to make a difference, but not necessarily by the whole topic. And sometimes we need to concentrate on the full topic of it all. All right, uh, anything else or should we have a couple of questions maybe? Well, I think it, to make it accountable is education's requirements and the questions. The more you ask questions on forum, the more you ask questions to your suppliers, however they do everything, the more you're going to make them have to move to the right directions. Uh, not every brand is motivated like we are. I mean, I'm motivated by my kids every time I see them, right? I mean, um, not everybody is the same way. Everybody feels like they know better and the, everything is fake that they hear about it. Uh, if it was the case, we wouldn't have more cancer. We wouldn't have more things coming up. The, you know, I think it is time to realistically realize that we have to make an impact. And every little dip, it doesn't matter if you do something bad. It doesn't matter if you have good, bad habits. One little habit at a time can change everything. All right. On well, that so, note, thank you. <laughs> um, so do we have any questions for Johan? All right, so um, the question is, for the record here, um, is there, uh, how do we cut through the greenwashing? How do we get the real deal? Is there any independent agencies or places we could trust the information from to know if our suppliers are telling the truth, basically? That's actually a really good question. I don't know if I have a very good answer for it, um, because right now there's really... In Europe, there is, so I can tell you that in Europe, there is facility right now that are keeping... Uh, the whole purpose on the whole thing is clear because you are being checked by, um, I don't even remember the norms on things, but they're basically discontinuing the chemicals compound at the sources of who makes the chemicals. So the availability is not there anymore. So instead of putting it back on the brand, what's happening is the government is going after the people making the compounds or the molecules, like the PU, like all the adhesive and everything, the resin that are in there. 
basically those are the things that are becoming unavailable anyway. Yeah, we're talking about films and transfers here. Uh, we're not talking so much about garments, but garments, certainly certified organic has a meaning to it, and it's a definition in the United States, and you have to be grown uh, three years without chemicals or fertilizer or pesticides, so that actually means something. So that's something to look for. The recycled things are a little harder, and the recyclable and the recycled content uh, are difficult. Some things are intermediary, you know, like right now, you know, we use uh, mailers that they can be used twice and they're made from recycled polyester. Are they the answer in the end? I don't think so, actually. But they weigh less than compostable ones, so the shipping to us and the shipping out the carbon footprint's less, and we decide to use that. It's the, I think, you know, for example, that company, Eco and Close, that sells those, has all the information there, and from that, at least you can make a decision. Look for transparency, I guess. Anybody that's willing to educate you is probably trying to tell you the right things on what they're trying to do. Don't judge also somebody if they're not perfect because they're trying to still go towards the right directions. But you're washing, look at your new washers, look at all your new dishwasher, wash machines. They're offering you now $250 on DTE to change if your equipment is older than seven years. And the reason they're doing this is because they're more efficiency in energy alone. So that just alone save your fridge, your, your washer, and everything else that can go on. So again, every little differences make a difference. The water being used, of course, is a big problem on your washing, on your clothes. So in education, there's a funny thing. In Europe, for example, while they are more advanced in certain things, they still wash at a very hot temperature. So the standards of washability is very different compared to in your, in your here. Here you have a medium of about 40 degrees Celsius, while in Europe it's still 60 degrees Celsius. And it's actually really bad to wash hot. The realistically, the best way to actually have a clean shirt is to soak up your shirt first because the pore of your textile is open and then you can wash the dirt. That's one of the best tricks to get your white white is actually just let it soak for an hour and then wash it. You're gonna have a much better result than any chemicals you're gonna put in there. And you watch people still put claw and put things like this. You don't need to, there's other way to wash things. Uh, in the process of it. It's funny, pre-soak and air dry your clothes and uh, that would be way less energy than any of the manufacturing processes. Process the I thing, think yeah. it's 80% uh, of the energy in a, a t-shirt is spent on drying it by the consumer, actually. So it's not just on the manufacturer's end either. And, and also you're gonna see all the, on that note, you'll see all the heat transfer that we're coming out. They used to apply at about 320, 340. We're going down now to 250 because your, your heat press that you're gonna apply use it less energy. So again, thinking through the whole scheme of things, most of my new medias are around 250 for five seconds that are coming out. Right now we are at about 305 for 10 seconds. But again, we're trying to dwell the times, not just for the ease of use of the product, but also for the lower electricity use. Power is a very, very pr big problem in Europe right now, particularly with the world in Russia. So I think electricity, everything went skyrocketing up. You guys think you guys went, your gas went up high. Electricity went up 300 times in Europe. I mean, so we have to think ahead. And it doesn't cost much more to really make a difference at the beginning. So. There's some pretty innovative approaches here if you go around even in here. So um, I'll give one example because they're right in eyesight. Fairweather Johnson, they use um, recycled textiles. Um, they remove the buttons and the um, zippers, et cetera, and sort them by color and then re-spin the yarn from that. So they're not doing any dyeing whatsoever and they're using all clothing that was a waste to make their new clothes. So that's pretty innovative. There's Lane 7, I think, has a sweatshirt that's made that way as well. And you have comfort, comfort colors also using three times less waters when they are making their shirt on the supply. Yeah, it is on this sign. Risco over there, they're also in the United States uh, recycling textiles. There's different kinds. Of, that's where you have to dig in. Some people are just like recycling the waste that they already had. Post-consumer waste being used for something is probably always the best thing because that's stuff that would otherwise end in a landfill. 
I, 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 I'm sorry, nothing to do with the April things, but people get mad here because you don't have a bag at a grocery store sometimes because they tell you not to have it. But is it really that hard to bring a bag every single time you go grocery? I mean, we do it in Europe all the time. So I, I promise you, it's, it's, not, it's a small difference, but it's such a big difference in the amount of plastic being used. It's actually kind of amazing. Uh, like, uh, so my city of Cambridge, you, you, have to, you have to charge for a bag, and it's only paper, not plastic. You know, it takes you like a month, then you start bringing canvas bags around. You know, it, you just get used to it. It's, it's just a habit, a lot of it. It's not really hard. Plus, for us that are in the printing business, it's a whole lot easier to print on a canvas bag and make a logo out of it and make an advertisement. So it has a bonus to bring your bag to the store. Yep. Um, other questions? All right, how about a hand for Johan? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yep, thank All you right. for having me. Thank our sponsors again, Alpha Broder, Los Angeles Apparel. They make this all happen for free. Hirsch, Howard, Lane 7, LET Apparel, Transfer Express, and Stalls. Check out our YouTube channel and kitchen.com.